any of us today do something and then wonder, why on earth did I do that? Or we say something to someone whom we love and we suddenly think, how could I possibly have said that to them? I didn't really mean that. And we find that there are things happening in our own personalities that we cannot explain. And we wonder why on earth we did it. Or often, after years and years of living, we find ourselves caught in certain habits of thought or certain ways of feelings about things or certain attitudes that we cannot overcome. They just have become ground into us, and we cannot change them. And yet we wonder, why is this so? In other words, I think many of us today are baffled and confused at the way our own personalities work. And that's what we're discussing on this program at this time, each day. We're talking about it in connection with the main question that we started to deal with about eight or nine months ago, what is the meaning of life? And we have come to the conclusion that the meaning of life is that we have been created by a personal being, an intelligent being, and that we have been created by him with capacities such as he has so that we might become like him and live with him forever and develop the infinite universe together with him and that he made us because he actually wants us to be his friends and he loves us and wants us to love him and that's why you are here because you are made by him to be his unique friend in a way that none of the rest of us can be. And so that's why he has given us the kinds of capacities that we have. And we've been discussing the capacities that our personalities have and the way they were meant to operate together. And it might help you if you have a page. Of course, if you're in the car, you better not risk it. But if you have a page and are sitting down, then do divide the page into three. Uh, a top third, a middle third, and a bottom third. Just with two lines, you can do that. Draw them horizontally and separate the page into three sections. And then if you put in the top page the body, just body, and then in the middle section put the word soul, S-O-U-L, and then in the bottom section spirit, and then draw an arrow from the top of the page to the bottom, from body through soul to spirit. That's the way most of us live. Just remember that the soul it comes from the Greek word psyche, which means psyche or psychological. So the soul is the will and the mind and the emotions. And most of us live like that. We try to pump some heroin, or some aspirin, or a depressant, or a tranquilizer into our body so that that will influence our emotions in an appropriate way, either quieten them or stimulate them, hoping thereby somehow to get our spirits harmonized and integrated with whatever supreme being or spirit there may be behind the universe. And, of course, it doesn't work. Uh, we find that the wilder the party was, the more we drank, uh, the more we are, were elated and uh, played the fool, probably. The next morning, the deeper the depression and the more empty we feel in the very heart of our being. That is our spirit. Our spirit is the real you. It's you as you really are, apart from all your other compulsions and constraints upon your life. What you do when you're alone, that's what you are. And that's your spirit. 
And that's the part of you that is meant to contact God. And of course, it doesn't in fact contact God when you operate the way we've just illustrated. In fact, the spirit becomes more dead to the creator of the universe. And actually, the way we were meant to operate is, if you look at that page again, and you have the top third, and the middle third, and the bottom third, and then you put the word spirit in the top third, and the word soul in the middle third, and the word body in the bottom third, and then draw an arrow from the top of the page to the bottom, from the word spirit through soul to the word body, that's the way we were meant to operate. The first way is from the outside in, from the body to the spirit, and leaves you with a spirit that is dead, with a personality that is saying, I, I hardly know who I am anymore. I just seem to be a little puppet, driven by my body, which is in turn driven by the outside circumstances and people and things around me. And that's, of course, the way most of us operate. We operate from the outside in. We go to the office in the morning, the boss smiles at us, we catch the smile through our eyes, we send the message to our emotions, he's pleased with us, our emotions go up, and then somebody else frowns at us, uh, the signal goes through again, and our emotions go down. So we're up and down all the time according to what comes through our eye gate or our eye ear gate, according to what comes through our body. If we have a good meal, our tummy feels comfortable, our emotions feel happy and peaceful, we're pleased. If we have a bad meal or something we don't like, we're discontented. And so we go up and down in this life like a switchback railway. When we live from the outside in. But the way we were meant to live was from the inside out. From the spirit, through the soul, through the body and to the outside world. Of course, the problem with most of us is that our spirits are dead anyway. And so when we try to live that way, we find we have nothing inside. For instance, we're sitting in a room, absolutely quiet, on our own, and it's maybe a time in our lives when all the bills are paid, all the pressures are off, the fears are gone, the anxieties, the constraints upon us, the compulsions, and we feel at la for once in our lives we're in absolute peace. And then we wonder, now what should we do? And we find there's nothing inside. It's as if there's nobody inside. It's as if we knock the door of our hearts and find there's nothing there. And that, of course, terrifies us. And then what most of us do is we run to the outside world and begin to live from the outside in again, just in order to get rid of the terrible sense of desolation and abandonment that we feel inside us. Of course, what we need most of all is the spirits to come alive. We need our spirit to come alive inside us. We need to rediscover who we are. We need to find ourselves again. Some people have said we need to be almost born all over again. You need to, it's almost as if we've killed the inside and it needs to be created again. There needs to be a, a new creation inside us. And many of us these days are at that point. Our problem is not the problem of outward, outer space, but it's the problem of inner space. There's an inner space inside that is empty and desolate, and we really don't know how to fill it, and we try to do it by continuing the operating of our personalities from the outside in, but it doesn't seem to bring any satisfaction. And in fact, of course, what we're trying to do is get the satisfaction from outside that we have always been meant to get from the inside. In other words, there's a dreadful feeling that is very natural of insecurity. When we consider, just for half a second even, that we are merely the smallest, minuscule insect on a globe or a sphere that is spinning through space at hundreds, thousands of miles an hour with no visible means of support, that causes a little concern, to say the least of it, a little insecurity. And you begin to wonder now, how on earth am I even staying on, especially if I'm in Australia and I'm actually upside down, how am I staying on? Why does this centrifugal force not throw me off into space? 
And so we begin to think to ourselves, well, we don't know the answer to all those magnificent cosmic questions, but we'd better make sure that we're safe on this piece of earth that we are inhabiting. And so we concentrate on trying to establish some kind of security. At least to keep the rain off our heads, we need some shelter or a roof over our head. At least to keep the cold out of our bones, we need some clothes. And so we begin to be stimulated by the need for security. And most of us live from the outside in. We do most things in order to try to establish some of the security that we were really meant to get in another way. Let's talk a little about that tomorrow and about how it affects the way we operate.